we got a special request from one of our Patreon members about this Sherwin-Williams paint color called Malted Milk. And it's an interesting one. It's not one that I hear talked about very much, but I wanna talk about it today. I'll give you some details on how you might wanna use this paint color on your next paint project. And more importantly, I'm gonna give you some trim color options that go really well with it. And then three color pairings, giving you an awesome color palette that you can use for free. If you're new to the channel, I'm James, the color guy. This of course is the paint people. And this is Color Quickie, where we break a color down and give you all the paint colors that go with it. Every project is going to be a bit different. And of course, your taste might be a bit different than mine, but that's kind of the point, right? So to start with, Malted Milk is a color that has rose in popularity over the last year or so. In fact, it was one of the 2023 Color Trends colors from Sherwin-Williams, which isn't surprising because we have seen such a rise in popularity of all these reddish colors, these clay-based colors, terracotta, things like that. Even though Malted Milk is a lighter color with a 62 LRV, it is in that red family. It has this sort of brownish red undertone happening. Interestingly enough, Sherwin-Williams places this in the orange category of colors, and that's mainly because of its brown base. Brown is kind of a dark version of orange, if you didn't know. But this color in particular is a little more on the red side of things. It has this earthy quality to it that I really, really think is interesting. It is fairly muted though. It does have a bit of gray to tone it down a little bit, which means I would put it in the rouge category. Those rougey gray colors, very organic feeling, a little bit uplifting for some reason. I really enjoy this color. Because of that slightly rosy quality that it has, it may be a little more polarizing in person just because it's not your typical neutral. It's not just a beigey gray or maybe a very light sage green. It has this sort of ambiguous quality where it could feel a little more beige in some circumstances and then very rosy and kind of pinky in other situations. Test this color out because it could be the perfect choice as your main color in your home or it's one that you just wanna stay away from depending on your preference. Now, if you are into this color and you need some trim color options for your baseboards and your doors and your frames, I got two of them. The first one is the lighter choice, which is Snowbound. And this is a classic color, a very slightly grayed out crisp white, really, really beautiful, very popular. It'll just feel extremely clean next to malted milk. It is quite a bit lighter, so you will see a nice pop of contrast between your walls in your trim, which I think is almost always a great thing, almost. Sometimes you wanna go with a bit of a subtler color. And then if you wanted a darker trim color, you could go for something really contrasty like off black or a deep taupe, but I went for something a little bit lighter, still dark. It's called chocolate powder. It sounds like the perfect match for malted milk. Delicious. But my interpretation of chocolate powder is it's basically a darker version of malted milk, except the red undertone is pulled back slightly. It does feel more like a milk chocolatey brown mixed with a bit of milk as well. So it has this powdery quality. It's kind of on that borderline of dark mid-tone and just dark color. It is pretty rich. There's basically a 30 point difference in terms of darkness, a good amount of contrast, but within the same family, this would be a good choice if you wanted a little more of a monochromatic feel. But before we get to our color pairings, I wanna mention that we've launched our Patreon, which is a paid subscription to exclusive bonus content. This is the best way to help us stay full time on YouTube because we love making these painting and decorating videos. I love being the color guy and giving you these free color palettes, but the only way we can do it and sustain it is by having your help. Support us on Patreon today. There are different tiers, different levels of support that give you more perks, like exclusive behind the scenes stuff. You can even earn the power to dictate which color quickies I make every single month on this YouTube channel. So if you want more information, just check the description down below. Thank you so much for your support. Okay, so number one is white sesame. And I picked this one because I wanted to give you another warmer neutral that wasn't red leaning. On its own, this is a paint color that has a 71 LRV, so quite a bit lighter than malted milk. And when you first look at it, it does have this beigey quality to it. You may even think, oh, there's maybe a hint of peachiness somewhere. White sesame, that's kind of in line, right? But when you compare it to malted milk, it almost feels like a greenish. Like it has this 
greeny beige quality that seems to appear, but it's very, very subtle, and it's only really visible in conjunction with something so opposite color-wise, that red undertone in malted milk. When used in separate parts of the home, these colors are just two neutrals interacting in a really nice way. I love how they go together. It gives you two options in terms of lightness. You have a nine point difference between the two, and then the undertones. A little more of a yellow beige in white sesame instead of that browny red color in malted milk. Color pairing number two is Quest Gray. And don't let the name fool you. This is a muted violet, a little bit of a purple being introduced here. And purple is kind of close to red. It's adjacent, which means it's a neighbor on the color wheel. With Malted Milk's red undertone, Quest Gray gives you something that's a little bit of a neighbor, but it's on the cooler side of things. But what's great about it is the cool is sort of doubled down because it's almost a slate gray purple. It has a nice muted quality to it as well. It is darker, around a 39 LRV, so there's enough body to it that gives it some richness. And we have another example of a neutral that is just a bit different. Yes, it's gray, I mean, it's in the name, but that purple aspect puts it into another territory that is not really seen very often. So that's why this is a color that I would call a subtle accent. It's not accentuating because of its vibrancy. It's not an aubergine purple or a Welch's grape juice, but the purple hue itself is what sets it apart from other grays. And because of that, this is a gray that I would use in places like bedrooms, even a bathroom, office. Normally I like to keep grays out of those spaces as much as possible, but the purple is what really gives it its character. And then finally, the third color pairing, the accent color, the one that really just completes this whole palette for me, Studio blue green and there you have it it's a blue green a really beautiful teal color it almost feels like a bronze or copper patina it has this beautiful saturation to it very much a historical color that we've seen that just stands the test of time very very timeless color and in this palette it just pops beautifully. Now, because of that green, it's going to be very complementary to malted milk. So the two have a very fun interaction. They'll stand out so well next to each other. Just make sure that if you are using them in the same space, have one a lot more than the other, like a 75-25 sort of ratio. Too much of both, like a 50-50 split, might be a bit jarring, but hey, you might be going for that too. Who am I to say? Here's the palette all together. Please let me know what you think. And also check out our Patreon if you want even more content from us. It's a great way to support what we do. And we have another color quickie right over here just for you.